Yo, yo, we are back. Back out here at Grand Villa. A couple of rough sessions recently, but Villa has been good to us in the past, so hoping to get back to winning ways. Games are always really good out here. Plan is today, we're gonna to jump into 2-5, see what's going down, get in the action. Hopefully win a few pots, take a few people to the cleaners. So I will see you at the tables. What's happening people, it's the Irishman here, back again with another poker vlog. Today we're at Gram Villa for a 2-5 session, we're buying in for $1,000. We're getting crushed lately on a downswing, so hoping our luck can change today. The action is always good out here, we've ran pretty good out here before, had some good sessions, so hoping to get back on the horse today. Kicking off the first hand, we look down at King Jack off and make it $20 to go in the cutoff. The small blind calls and the big blind gets out of the way and we're going heads up to a flop. Flop comes down queen seven ace with two hearts. So we flop a good shot here to the nuts. But considering we have the range advantage here when it gets checked with us, we're going to fire out a C bet. We actually size up this time, go with a bit of a bigger size considering the range advantage we should have against the small blind. Small blind should be three bet and a lot of their strongest ace x etc. So we're going to pile on the pressure. We bet $25 and the small blind calls. Turnout comes to jack of clubs, so we pair our jack. And it's interesting because we would have been barreling most turns to fold out hands like 7x, put some pressure on queen x, but now we pick up a bit of showdown. And in game, we end up checking back. But looking back at now, I think this actually could be a nice spot to continue barreling as a bluff. We just pick up more outs. We can now hit a 10, a king, a jack. So maybe this would have been a good hand to barrel, but we end up checking it back now that we pick up some showdown. And the river comes in nine. Small blind checks to us again. And we also have a decision now again. In game I ended up just going. We have enough showdown to just check it back. But I'm wondering. Would this have been a good river to barrel? I think if we were going to barrel. We would have had to barrel three streets. I don't think we're getting folds from many ace -X. And when we go bet check bet. We probably don't get many folds from queen X. Unless we bet big. So I think after we check the turn. Checking back the river is probably the best play. But. When we end up losing the ace eight off, I was just thinking, could this have made a nice hand where we bet the turn and barrel the river? But instead, I think once we check the turn, we have to check back. Losing the ace eight off, I think maybe we could have took the more aggressive line and turned it into a bluff across three streets, considering we do block the king ten. We do block a lot of the strongest hands with our blockers. I think we could have got ace eight to fold, but... We nearly would have rather not pick up the jack on the turn because I think we end up barreling the turn and probably barreling the river and winning the hand that way. So, interesting one, the line we took. I think we took the pretty standard line, but it's interesting to look at and think, could we have played this hand different? And I think it actually would have made a nice bluff across three streets. I don't know, let me know what you think. To start this hand, we have 800 or so in our stack. We look down at the best hand in poker, the ones, pocket aces, hoping to win a big pot with a hair. The button opens to $40, which is interesting. It's folded around to him and he decides to open 8x. The standard raise was 20, 25, and now he decides to go 8x, which is pretty interesting here. We have a standard 3 bet, and we're going to use our usual size of 4x, but pretty nice that he raised so big that if he had made a 20, we're making it like 85, 90 here. We get to make it 160 because of the size that he made it. He ends up making the call and we're going heads up to the flop. So it's interesting when I see someone open 8x and their usual open is to like $20, $25. Straight away, I think they have a stronger hand than they usually have. It's a bit of a bet size and tell. Like if they're making it the $20 with all their standard hands, they're not just going to suddenly make it 40 on the button with five, six suited. So 
I think we could be up against a stronger range than usual here, which is very good for us when we have pocket aces. The flop comes down 976 with two hearts, so it's a pretty interesting flop. I think small blind versus button, if he hadn't opened so big, this is a flop I like to check aces on. He has all of the sets, he can have some two pairs some of the time, so it makes sense to check our strongest hand sometimes just as protection here when it's a board that he's likely to have a bigger nut advantage on but as played when he opens 8x i think he's waited to having more pocket pairs like tens and jacks that we're going to want to just get value from now so this is where the hand kind of goes away from the game tree you'd usually see some small bets or some checking but i think given we think his range is stronger than usual with his 8x open we're going to size up here and bet the flop to 175 dollars it's unorthodox here you wouldn't usually see pocket aces choose a big sizing on this flop but Given what we've seen from pre-flop, we want to just put maximum amount of chips in, in the pot before any scare cards come down. Then he decides to do something that I didn't expect. He decides to go all in and he covers us. So now we're in a bit of a spot here. We're obviously losing to all the sets. I don't think he has any straights when he opens that big and calls. He can certainly have sets. I don't think he'd shove an over pair. But I think he could definitely shove some no flush draws. So, we're going to check here, see if we have the Ace of Hearts. We don't. I think if we had the Ace of Hearts now, we actually could consider folding because it takes away most of the hands that we think he's bluffing with that we're ahead of. I think when he opens to 8x, he's going to have a lot of pocket pairs, a lot of high card hands suited broadways. So, I think this becomes a way tougher spot if we do have the Ace of Hearts. Given we don't have the Ace of Hearts, I think we just have to call and hope we're not up against a set. We make the call and we get the bad news. How we're running lately. Same as the last vlog. Three bad pot with pocket aces. He flopped a set with pocket nines. We're going to be needing some help here. We need one of the two remaining aces on the turn of the river to get us out of jail. But the dealer doesn't do us a favor. He doesn't like us. He runs it out clean for the button and he stacks us in a pretty big pot. You hate to see it. In the next hand, we look down at the black pocket nines in late position. Going to be good enough for an open here. We make it $20 to go. It folds around to the small blind who raises to $100. Gets back to us. I think we're going to be calling here with a hand like nines. It is a bit of a bigger raise. Usually it's between 4 and 4.5x four and so 5x. It's just a tad bigger, but don't think we can fold to that sizing. Flop comes down 10-6-3 rainbow and this just shows you where live poker is very different to online and what you expect to see. In my head I was like right nice we beat all the over cards so he's probably going to bet one third we're going to call and then evaluate the turn but he bets 270 into 200 so we have a pretty easy fold now the bigger the bet the less you have to defend if he bets one third we have to do a lot of calling but when he sizes that size we definitely don't want to call with nines we're just on the turn we're up shit's creek without a paddle we're not going to know what to do are we good are we not so we can just fold so many hands here versus that size and, and if he did have an over pair he just cost himself money he could have had two over cards and yeah we just give him the pop but he just gets wrecked then when we do have something so definitely something you don't see online or in standard games people just over betting the flop that huge in a three bet pot not something i would have expected not even that interesting of a hand i just wanted to show the differences in live poker of some of the wild shit that you see compared to very often every other game that you're playing in the next hand we look down at the two bios under the gun pocket jacks we're going to open it to twenty dollars the button decides to call and the big blind comes along also so we're heading three ways to a flop here Flop comes down 455 with two hearts. So after the big blind checks with us, we're going to continue here with our over pair. We fire out a bet of $35. The button calls and the big blind gets out of the way. So good news for us. The big blind should have way more 5x than the button has. So pretty confident we have the best hand here. The ace of spades now comes on the turn. And we're going to decide to check here. I think probably not a great card to barrel on. If he does have the enough flush, I did just make top pair. If we bet and get raised, we're kind of in no man's land. So we check it over to him, see what he does. He decides to check it back. River comes to two of spades. Now I'm fairly confident we have the best hand. I wouldn't have expected him to check back too many aces on the turn. We're hoping that he has a pocket pair, say sixes, sevens, eights, nines. A hand like this that we can get value from. We don't want to go too big because these hands will probably fold if we fire out a big enough of a bet. So we fire out a bet of $35. 
We get quickly called and he turns over. Ace deuce off. So pretty non-standard call from him pre-flop. We can definitely make note of this. It's definitely a fun player. It's not a hand you should be calling on the button versus an under the gun round. So good to make note of this. We got to see the hand at showdown. We can definitely use this information in future hands. So last time I done a mystery hand, everyone seemed to enjoy it. So we're actually going to do that again. I'm going to give away fifty dollars to whoever can guess this hand. To the suits, if no one gets two correct suits, if someone gets one right, I'll give it to them. It'll be the hand first and the suits, and we'll go all the way. If no one gets the suits, I'll just go to whoever picked the hand. If there's a tiebreaker, I will just do a random name generator. So it's going to be like a play along hand. I open. $20 with this hand from early position. A pretty good hand, standard, going to be open here. The big blind defends and we go heads up to a flop. Ace, queen, eight. So we don't connect with the flop, but with our hand, we definitely do have a range advantage. We're going to continue here. We also do have some showdown, so that's a hint. We make it $15 and the big blind calls. Turn comes another queen. It pairs the middle card, so this is going to be a better card from him as we be checking back some of our worst queens. He checks to us, and I think this is where we make a mistake. I play pretty quickly just not to hold up the game. I don't like sitting in the tank. I check back really quick, which I think I should have took a second because when the river comes a seven, he ends up blasting off 2x pot. He bets $140, so now we're in a situation here. We do have a hand I think we could call. It definitely could catch some bluffs, but... I think we don't know enough about this player. If it's a really good player who could turn some bottom pairs or small pocket pairs into a bluff, I think we could consider making the call. It's a very nice sizing by him because he knows I'm not going to have too many queen x when I take this line. I think ultimately what it came down to when we decided to fold was our hand heavily blocked some of the straight draws and backdoor straight draws he can have on the flop. So I think this combo probably doesn't make a good bluff catcher, but... It's interesting because he did use a really nice size in there on the river and I would have loved to see his hand because I think it's a very nice spot for him to fire out some big bluffs with some small pocket pairs because when I bet one third on the flop he actually has to continue versus a lot of my range with a lot of his range so we end up making the fault we don't get to see his hand you just didn't get to see the hand either so guess in the comments below I'll give the winner 50 quid so get guessing and I'll announce the winner one day after the vlog is released. We start the hand here with about a50. There's a 10 straddle on before middle position makes it 35 to go. The hijack calls, and this is where I think I made a mistake. I think just with the variance I've been having, I end up making a call in a spot where I always would squeeze. This is the most standard squeeze here with king queen, and we don't take it, which is really disappointing in myself to be honest. Because I think whether we're running bad or running good, it shouldn't have any influence over how we play the hands. Like this is just a squeeze here always. The fact that we don't take it, obviously, we can put it down to, oh, we don't want to play bigger pots. We're having a lot of bad luck at the moment, but that's a really bad way to be thinking and pretty bad for our mental game. So definitely don't like the fact that it didn't take the squeeze spot, but we end up making the call, the button calls and the big blind calls. So we're going five ways to a flop here. There's 175 in the middle and it comes down queen, queen, 10 with a flush draw. So pretty good flop for us here. We've just flopped trips. We're in a five-way pot. There's already plenty of money in the middle. The original razor checks and the hijack bets $50, less than one-third. A really small bet here. We can't let them away with that. There's too many people in this pot. There's too many flush draws and straight draws out there. There's going to be a bunch of bad cards that we're not going to want to see. So we're going to raise it up. We raise it up to $150. I think in theory, we probably could have even went bigger. We maybe did go a bit too small. The button folds, the big blind folds, the original razor folds and it gets back to the hijack. He's the villain that stacked us with the nines versus our aces. We're looking for some of that money back. We're hoping that he calls and we get to just take him to value town, bar and that no scare cards come out. But he does something different this time. He sticks all in, rest of his stack, he covers us and now we're just put in the blender again. Like it's when it rains it pours and when you're getting a bad variants it really comes down on your heart I think. With our trips here, I don't think we can fold. I don't think he'd ever shove a full house of tens. We're five eights to the flop. Why not let people hit their flush? I also think if he had ace queen, he would have three back pre flop. So we probably have the best hand here. We are hoping to be up against queen jack or queen nine suited and maybe just a random flush draw and straight draw. The board runs out jack on the turn. 
River comes a blank. We're hoping he doesn't have Queen Jack now. We turn over a hand. He turns over Ace Queen for a better trip. So interesting. He didn't three bet pre flop. He ends up getting us to stack ourselves. I think had we a squeeze pre flop, the result is still the same. But but I'm still annoyed I didn't take the spot. I don't think we can do much with the ten and straddle on. We've 80, 85 bigs to start the hand. We flop trips with King Queen. I think we're just meant to lose our stack here, but. When you're running bad, you're really running bad. We're going to wrap up the session now. We're down 2k on the day, so we're very tilted, very steamed. I don't think getting back into the game is a good idea at this point. We're just likely to blast off. We're just going to call it quits, lick our wounds, and I will see you now on the outro. Look at Vancouver looking picturesque as fuck. Right, so the final tally into the game for 2k, out for zero. Obviously not ideal. Running pretty bad lately. Couple of cooler spots. Maybe we should just be dumping aces on the flop every week. But that's too nitty like. Obviously these periods happen in poker. Pretty annoyed and not really by the downswings because they're part and parcel of the game. It's more that how I'm letting them affect my play. There was one or two squeeze spots I didn't take. There was the king queen hand which I get stacked. I get stacked regardless if I squeeze. And there was another hand where there was an open a call and I flatted nine ten of diamonds on the button which obviously is fine, but I think if I'm playing my A game feeling good, I would be squeezing, so that's obviously not ideal. Definitely have to go in with a better mindset next game because like, it's just one long session. It's irrelevant that we're getting crushed lately and getting smacked in the face by variants. All in all, we're not discouraged. We're gonna jump back on the wagon. We're out to smoke all these fields. And yeah, Barda, feeling good. I feel like we reset for the next session. Play our normal game, take all the spots, variants will be what will be. So if you've been liking these vlogs, please hit the subscribe button, go straight to the Guinness Fund, keep the Irishman on the points, you know you want to. We'll be back with more vlogs, with some exciting stuff coming up in the next couple of months, so you definitely want to stay tuned. A bunch of competitions, stuff like this, keep it locked, rattle that subscribe button if you haven't, and I will see you on the next one very soon. Peace.